thanking you for your leadership in introducing a bill to keep our communities safe, to assure guns are used in a safe manner. I remember, as President of Women's Commission, working with you in the last round and the scars you suffered then. So it takes a lot of courage for you to do it this time, so thank you. And I want to tell you that you, Mr. Bhupi Singh has represented you well in legal, so you, you are served well. My Do question, that. I have two questions, but before the chair cuts me off, uh, my first question following up with what Senator Dagenet said is, I accept that if somebody goes to the border with marijuana, there should be, because you're crossing. I accept that if you have, have just smoked or is in your pocket, there is issues. The challenge I have and the concern I have, and I really want you to take this very seriously, Minister, is the question that came up last week when I asked the question of the lawyer who, from the U.S., and that is somebody who has smoked uh, cannabis five, ten years ago, and they have to truthfully answer that they did, and they can be denied for life. We have an Olympian from my province who have, was denied, and I would like, Minister, for you to work on that, because that's not something that's an immediate risk. That was in the past, and we want people to be honest. The lawyer suggested that maybe just to walk away from the interview, but that under Section 23, as you know, can lead to obstruction charges for this person. So it's not that easy to do that anymore. So I would like you to look at that, and I'll have you comment on this. And my other thing is, Minister, I'm really not happy with the response you've been giving on convictions of mere possession. You've said you will look at that later. Uh, Minister, um, we share a SIPIC with the, uh, the other side. They will have those in front of them when a person uh, goes across the border. And I believe, Minister, you have to do something now, not wait to deal with people who have mere possession. And I'm coming to you with a solution, and that is to see the San Francisco model, where they are they are, if you have a mere possession, it will just go off your record. Because I think that if you are serious about these issues, uh, you really need to look at the mere possession <coughs> convictions from the past. Well, on, on the latter point, uh, uh, Senator, as you know, the, uh, um, the legislative calendar at the moment is uh, chock-a-block full. Uh, but the, uh, the Prime Minister has indicated on, on several occasions that uh, uh, that once the uh, um, the new regime is in place, uh, which uh, changes a paradigm that has existed for nearly a hundred years in Canada, uh, that we will we will examine uh, all the uh, uh, the ways in which uh, we can ensure that all Canadians are treated fairly, uh, and the uh, uh, the process by doing that. There are several options and models. Uh, and I would certainly be glad to look at the one that uh, that you've described. Um, there are there are several different ways to uh, uh, to accomplish that objective. But uh, uh, at the moment, the uh, the urgent requirement is to make sure that 45 and 46 uh, uh, are actually enacted, so the law changes. Um, and uh, we'll uh, we'll welcome every good idea about how to to uh, deal with the consequential issues and make sure that Canadians are treated uh, fairly. And uh, um, Having smoked cannabis five years ago. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, two things, the Americans have said two things to us in the, well, many things, but two, two things relevant to this. Um, first of all, people do need to answer border questions truthfully. Uh, so uh, the notion of uh, being dishonest with a with a border uh, interview is not a good idea, because that can have huge ramifications for a very long time. So Canadians should answer truthfully, uh, but they they have said to me their greatest concern is the potential for congestion and lineups. And uh, my response back to them was, well, if circumstances aren't changing at the border, it's illegal now, it will be illegal then, both ways, nothing has changed at the border, why would you change your interview to, uh, to ask people a different set of questions? Uh, because the border facts have not changed. Um, uh, so the the issue of of uh, you know asking out of the blue 
uh, a question that actually has nothing to do with anything about uh, conduct or behavior 10 or 15 or 20 years ago uh, is, uh, is a, quite frankly, an irrelevant question uh, to anything that has to do with border security right at this moment with this particular person. Uh, so we are having a dialogue with the Americans, trying to, to step through all the scenarios, all the, the uh, um, what-if possibilities, uh, to make sure that, that they are thoroughly informed about what we're doing, uh, and also, as I said in my remarks, thoroughly informed about the rationale for why we're doing it. Uh, and also pointing out to them that there are, I forgot the number now, but uh, a substantial number of states in the, in the U.S., uh, that are presenting this challenge to the United States domestically. So we all need to think this through thoughtfully together. Uh, and there's no reason for that border interview to change in any significant or substantive way um, because the rules haven't changed. I think at there the are 27 states. But, Minister, I'm, I'll just be one second, Chair. Minister, I was very unhappy with the answers we got from your department last last week, and that's why we asked you to be here, because the, the idea, and I could be wrong, you can look at the transcript, was that the campaigns will start after. I come from BC. Washington is, uh, has legal, ca cannabis is legal. My province, if this goes through, will be legal. I believe that the campaign should start now to protect Canadians as to what their rights are. Okay, I'll check the transcript. Good. Thank you.